the 14-year-old princess had a strange muzzle inserted into her mouth. All this was done to prepare her for marriage to the French royal family. Not only that, but she was forced to cut her long hair to learn French court etiquette, but because of the difficulty of the curtsy, so she did not fully master them even after many days of study. The mother of the Archduchess of Austria began to worry about her daughter's future life. Marie was the princess of Austria. France and Austria had agreed to marry in order to strengthen their alliance. At the age of 14, Marie is about to marry Louis XVI, the crown prince of France. In her ignorance, Marie embarks on the carriage to France with great anticipation. Little did she know that her destiny would change forever. She had no idea that years later, she would be accused of extravagance and spending all the money in the treasury. And to be guillotined at the age of 39, naive Marie arrives at the border between France and Austria with her pet dog in her arms. She was greeted by the courtier, who would later spend a lot of time with her. Marie wanted to be close to him, but was ruthlessly pushed away. She asked Marie to curtsy immediately. Not only that, courtier also ordered Marie's dog to be taken away. Because the moment she crossed the border, Marie had to give up everything she had about Austria. At 14 years old, Marie was already helpless, and now she had to cut off her only ties to her homeland. She was so upset that she was about to cry, but then the courtier told her, A French princess does not display her feelings and never cries in public. Marie tried to control her emotions. Then she crossed a path and met Louis XV, the king of France, who greeted her at the royal villa. Marie saluted discreetly as the courtier had told her to do, but the king kindly told her to make herself at home. After all, this was not Versailles. He then warmly introduced Marie to the royal family, but Marie was embarrassed by their indifferent attitude. The late arrival of Louis only saluted Marie from a distance and left in a hurry without saying a word to her. This made Marie feel even more lost in a foreign country. Only the princess, who was also Mary from Italy, showed some kindness to Marie, probably because they were both in a similar situation. After that they became good friends who could talk to each other. Early the next morning, Marie arrived at Versailles in a carriage dressed in French court dress. As an exotic princess, about to marry into the French royal family, she would be here for all to see. It wasn't her pretty face or her gorgeous dress that they were looking at. It's about watching the future queen of France. Marie also knew that her debut would be crucial, but the more nervous she is, the more likely she is to make a mistake. She accidentally broke her foot and was laughed at by the others. The man next to her tells her to relax. Marie thought it was an unforgivable mistake, but she has no time to regret it, and she was immediately sent to her room to change. Courtier also explained to Marie the many rules of Versailles at this time. Every morning, she had to get up early to pray, 15 minutes to clean herself, and 3 minutes to comb her hair. As Dauphin, she had to dress in public. She had to be served by the chief courtier or a princess with a royal bloodline or title. Marie seemed to be a privileged and honored woman in every way, but it also meant that Marie would lose her freedom from now on. Marie and Louis walked into the chapel hand in hand in a grand gown, and through the eyes of the crowd, the moment Louis put Marie's wedding ring on her finger, Marie's tragic life was sealed. As night fell, the sky was lit up with fireworks. Marie was dressed in a nightgown for her wedding night. She had no sexual experience and had no idea what to do. But when she nervously enters the bedroom, she finds the bed surrounded by people. According to royal protocol, they were required to be here to watch what happened next. The newlywed's intimate encounter was about to be completed in full view of the crowd. The servants slowly removed their robes and left them naked in full view of the royal family. This is a French royal wedding custom, but Princess Marie, who had come from Austria to marry her, was embarrassed. They both got under the covers as soon as the servants lifted the covers. They thought the shame would end there, but then the king signaled for the next ceremony. Then the crowd picked up the tray of balls and threw them at Marie and Louis, who were hiding in bed and embarrassed. This ceremony was supposed to be a blessing for the couple, but it seemed to turn into a humiliation amidst the laughter of the crowd. <laughs> They both cowered helplessly under the covers and endured the drama. The situation suggested that Marie's marriage was destined to become a joke. Marie felt as if a century had passed in that short minute. Finally, as the king pulled the curtain on the bed, the newlyweds had a sweet moment to themselves. Marie didn't know how to behave, just as she was getting nervous and expectant. Louis, her husband, took a pillow and put it between them, then turned his back on Marie and went to sleep. This also left Marie completely confused. Help us. She could only shrink under the covers and hold back her tears. As far as she was concerned, 
her marriage with him was not only about their happiness, it was about the union of the nations. Marie's mother had always told her that it was her duty as an Austrian princess to win the affection of Crown Prince Louis. The early birth of an heir was the only thing she had to do. So Marie had to try to touch her husband, but Louis was so frightened by her that he just got up and left. He leaves Marie alone on her wedding night. Not only that, but Marie finds. Marie also discovered that there were peepholes in every corner of the bedchamber. Spying on their wedding night, Marie was so frightened that she went back to bed and covered her head with a blanket. Marie had nightmares on her wedding night because of the horror and strangeness of everything. She desperately tries to escape from this suffocating palace, but she became the laughing stock of everyone. Everyone accuses her of not fulfilling her duties as crown princess. She wants to leave but has nowhere to go. But the most devastating thing of all is that she wakes up and her nightmares almost become reality. For months had passed, Marie still hasn't managed to get Louis interested in her. In order to fulfill her duties as crown princess as soon as possible, Marie had found a private tutor, Madame du Barry. A woman who had been favored by the old king for decades, knew a few things. Not only did she dare to be the last one to arrive at the party, she also dared to sit directly on the king's body as soon as she arrived. In order to promote Louis and Marie's relationship as husband and wife, Madame du Barry decided to teach Marie some sexual skills. She told Marie that seduction should start with a kiss, and it's the eyes that should trigger the kiss. The princess changed into a sexy nightgown with the neckline pulled down and put on bright makeup. She wanted to consummate the marriage with her husband Louis, which should have been completed for months ago. But when Marie knocked on the door, she found Louis having fun with his guard. Marie was reluctant to give up until now. She tried to put on her learned seductive face, but the guard shut her out mercilessly. Humiliated by her pride, she wipes off her rich makeup. At the age of 14, Marie marries from Austria to France. She only wants to fulfill her mother's mission of marriage and produce an heir to strengthen the alliance between the two countries. But despite Marie's efforts to impress her husband, Louis seems to have no interest in women. He spends all his time writing and hunting. Even when Marie greeted him with a public salute, Louis did not respond. This left her open to ridicule and taunting in full view of everyone. Marie even went on a hunt that she didn't like in order to accommodate Louis. She also saw a different side of her husband on the hunt. When she saw Louis take a buck in a daring manner, Marie also cared for her husband from a distance and showed her admiration. When Louis returned, Marie couldn't wait to go up to him and congratulate him. I have never seen anything like it. Would you like to visit me this evening? Louis' silence and departure once again made Marie the butt of the joke. In her situation, at Versailles will become even more difficult. But what Marie doesn't know is that the seemingly silent Louis is already paying attention to her. Marie's optimism is also very attractive to him. But Louis is too young and shy to express himself. He is not ready to become a husband or a father. On the other hand, Madame du Barry is still the most favored woman around the king. This made the king's two daughters very unhappy. They wanted to find a wife for their father who would match his status. They thought that the Italian princess was the most suitable candidate. Although she had married from Italy, she was already a widow and she was weak. So she was better controlled than Madame du Barry. So the two princesses, who had never met Marie, took the initiative to talk to her this day. They said they wanted Marie to help facilitate the marriage of the king and the Italian princess. Then why doesn't he marry Madame du Barry? How can the king of France marry the whore of Babylon? Marie learned about Madame du Barry's life and background with a description of Madame du Barry's career. Marie, who was a princess, was also a bit disgusted with her. And when she remembered that she had been close to Madame du Barry and had even studied with her, Marie, ashamed and angry, gets up to leave, but then she accidentally falls down and is again laughed at by the crowd. Louis tries to go after Marie to comfort her, but Marie thinks he's here to taunt her too. Well, I suppose you found it funny, but I didn't know you, monsieur. I am your wife. When are you going to be my husband? <laughs> 